The Apple Watch Ultra 2 is probably the best Apple Watch you can buy, but it isn't perfect and there are some serious issues with this product. This wearable device from Apple launched to not much fanfare, as many saw it as a minor upgrade on the first version, which, if we're being honest, it is. But this is my first Apple Watch Ultra and having upgraded from a Series 7, I can happily say that this is a huge upgrade and improvement on that model. The design is a departure from the traditional Apple Watch look. It stands out. It has a natural titanium case and a flat watch face. Along with this, a orange programmable action button. It is a very nice looking watch, let alone smartwatch. When people unfamiliar with the product see it, they always ask me, what is it? Which is usually followed with the question, can I try it on? This is where one of the most frustrating problems with this watch will come into play for a large proportion of people. It's a large watch. I can't count how many people I've let try this on only for them to say that it is too big and heavy for their arms. 90% of those people happen to be female, which begs the question, why did Apple create a watch that a large proportion of their customer base will not be able to use? And why is this the only Apple watch that has a single size? I understand they'd probably need to cut back on some features like battery life and screen size, which wouldn't seem fair when you compare them to the regular models, but a lot of their potential customers are instantly alienated because of this larger size. Now, if we completely ignore the size issue, we can move on to its other features. Firstly, I want to talk about the straps. I was happy to see that my Apple Watch stainless steel strap from my Series 7 fit perfectly on this. This means anyone upgrading from a larger Series 7, 8 or even 9 can happily switch bands between each watch. The supplied indigo loop strap is very comfortable, rather unique looking and surprisingly incredibly sturdy. When performing workouts, it doesn't move around and not only is it tight on the wrist, I find it comfortable to wear and I barely notice it on my arm. In terms of actual performance, this is where things get very complicated for me in how I rate it. To start with, it's undeniable that the screen is absolutely incredible on this watch. It's bright, crystal clear, and it can show so many watch face complications, especially if you use the modular ultra watch face. The always on display is a nice feature, but this is one I actually turn off. I find that this feature drains the battery a bit too fast for my liking, and I actually prefer that it takes a little more effort to check the time or my notifications. Images and text are rendered sharp and vibrant, album art pops, and all the text and map details are very clear to read. Battery life I found to be very hit or miss. When I first started using it, I was getting around 24 hours of battery life, despite not performing any workouts. But recently, if I go without any workouts and simply wear it throughout the day and take it off at night, I can get almost three days of use out of it. Why don't I wear it to sleep? Well, I'm not one for sleep tracking. I already know that I don't get enough sleep, so I don't need my watch telling me I need more. I did try out this feature a few times, but honestly, it just doesn't interest me. And here lies an issue. I'm taking my watch off at night. I might as well throw it on my bedside charger and let it charge. That way, if I, for example, do decide to go on an all-day bike ride, I do not need to worry about whether 60% battery will last me a 10 to 20 mile bike ride. On one occasion with my Apple Watch Series 7, I went on a 30 mile bike ride and the battery drained from 100 to 0% in just over five hours. So I do get a bit of range anxiety when it comes to the battery life. There is one feature I do turn off which can negatively affect my battery life and that is auto pause workouts. The reason I turn this feature off is because it very rarely gets it right. I could pause for two minutes, start riding off, and it would not catch on that I'm already halfway down a trail. Luckily, I use Strava to keep a log of all my rides and it does a great job at cutting out any pauses by using GPS data. The built-in battery optimization is a very good feature for prolonging battery life of the watch. If your battery is put on charge on anything above around 25%, it will charge to 80%. This is a nice feature, but I do always override this if I know that the following day I'm going to be out taking part in any sort of outdoor activity. And speaking of GPS, when it comes to workouts, I have noticed, at least in the GPS department, that it is far more accurate. There have been several times with all my previous Apple Watches where it would incorrectly report GPS data and distances. It would say I was on a completely different trail to the one I was actually riding my bike down. Previous issues where I've had a workout randomly stopped due to the watch getting too cold or it failing to read my heart rate are a thing of the past. 
I'm not sure if this was an issue with my Apple Watch Series 4 and Series 7, but there is one trail at a local bike park I ride and I'd say 3 out of 5 times I get to the bottom of the trail and my watch will have stopped a workout without me even touching it and sometimes it would restart the watch completely. This would always happen in winter when the temperatures were cold but so far, fingers crossed, with the Apple Watch Ultra 2 I haven't had any issues with workouts stopping randomly or it completely failing to read any heart rate. Another hack I use to help try and avoid issues with my workouts randomly stopping is to turn on the swimming water lock. This makes it so I cannot pause or touch anything on the screen without holding down the crown for a few seconds. As in the past, some fabrics on some of my riding jerseys do seem to interact with the screen which would then pause or stop any sort of workout. Turning this lock on does get annoying when I want to check notifications, but it's the safest way i found to ensure that my watch doesn't randomly stop a workout. Previous workout bugs aside, there is one issue that still resides across all of the Apple Watches I've owned and it relates to fall detection. I cannot express how many times this feature is randomly triggered if I've hit a jump on my bike and landed a little too hard on the ground. It is pretty annoying, but it's one of those few features that I dare not turn off in case I really do get into a serious accident. I always have to mark that I've not fallen off and I really hope that me providing this data is helping my watch learn how to be more accurate with my style of riding. We've covered design, battery life, a few bugs and workouts, but ultimately, who is this watch actually designed for? It's marketed towards those who go on long adventures and live a more outdoor extreme lifestyle. I mean, the watch doesn't fit on a huge percentage of people's wrists and everyday ordinary people are buying this, even though they're not these outdoor extremists. Does your friend who has never done a workout in his life and plays video games all day need one? What about the person who visits the gym maybe twice a week? What about someone who goes for a family walk every Sunday? Or just the plain old Apple enthusiast? Honestly, no, these people do not need this watch. And I could try be some sort of action sports elitist and say they should stick to their regular series of watches, but I can't be that guy. Everyone should go out and buy this watch if they can afford it. In my opinion, it's the best performing, best looking and most useful Apple Watch available. And with that, also comes the Apple Premium Tax. It is almost double the price of a Series 9 watch and £300 more than a Series 9 with cellular. At £799 you get a bigger, brighter and sharper screen, better battery life, a more rugged construction, cellular connectivity and the addition of an action button. Is that worth it? Well, I personally think it is. I use this every single day and I noticed improvements in all of those categories instantly. But the main issue with this watch still stands. Not everyone can wear it. Apple have produced a really stunning and compelling product packed with health features and useful apps. But if a large proportion of people can't use it, it makes it a really hard sell for people. So if you're considering buying an Apple Watch Ultra 2, I would highly recommend you go into an Apple store or a local tech store and try one on before you buy it. Don't go ordering it online because you'll probably end up regretting it if it doesn't fit. So this is a very hard sell and hopefully Apple corrects this strange size issue and releases two sizes next year like they do with all their other watches. Everybody should have a chance to try this watch and take advantage of all the features and the great design that it offers.